Huh. A movie where a brother usurps the other, taking over the throne and their lions? Hmm. Where have we heard that one before? Wait, 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 wait. Robin Hood predates that movie. Hmm. Disney repeating themselves? Nah. Mary! Mary! I found the real Robin Hood! No, Mary, that's not Robin Hood. That's a, just a regular fox. But Robin Hood is a fox, so therefore... I seriously question your logic sometimes, but that's still not Robin Hood. Just a normal fox with... four... tails? So, is this Robin Hood or a Pokemon? Well, Woolpix has six tails. Ah! It talks! A minute ago you literally thought this fox was Robin Hood. Why should it shock you that he can talk? But Pokemon don't talk! Uh... So, I was just trying to buy some groceries when this mad woman kidnapped me. What is even going on here? Actually, she's the mad one. Sorry about that. She does that from time to time. Well, whatever. Aren't you that reviewing Leprechaun? <laughs> Do you have a death wish? Well, I actually thought we could review Robin Hood while I'm here. It just happens to be one of my favorite Disney movies. Oh, really? I wonder why. Ah, uh, she's learning sarcasm. Oh, I'm so proud. So, can I stick around for the review? No. Fine. I'll let you know when I find a black cauldron or a cat named Oliver or whatever. Sometimes when using techniques to save time and money in art, it could be seen as cheating instead. In the 50s and 60s, the animation industry was either one of the two things. Extraordinary, expensive and complicated, like Sleeping Beauty, or cheap and simple like Hanna-Barbera cartoons. There seemed to be no happy medium. With the death of Walt Disney in 1966, Robin Hood was the first one released from the studio that Walt had no hand in. But the ghost of Walt was still haunting the studio and didn't properly leave it until the 80s. During the 70s, the animation industry was in a state of limbo. Other studios were testing the water and boundaries trying to figure out what the audience wanted while also figuring out where the industry should go next. After the so-called flagship of the industry losing their long-term captain, the studio seemed to be veering off course, while other smaller studios were being more daring. Bakshi Productions especially was a welcomed alternative to mainstream animation, delivering more adult-oriented productions. Fritz the Cat, featuring anthropomorphic animals, was the first animated feature film to receive an X rating, and with good reason, or bad reasons, depending on how you look at it, anthropomorphism. Hmm, sounds like I'm approaching furry territory here. I may need some help on this. I believe I can assist you with that. I'm a fox after all. Anthropomorphism means to give human form to gods, though now the word is used when describing animals, inanimate objects, natural forces, etc. Anthropomorphism is the attribution of human traits, emotions or intentions to non-human entities. Anthropomorphic personifications allow us as humans to better understand abstract concepts. Embodying a concept, emotion, natural forces or seasons and weather, making them easily identifiable, allows us to relate as well as relay things we do not understand. Death, for example, is personified in the Grim Reaper or perhaps taking abstract things and making them have more poetic meanings. Yeah, that's all well and good, but the problem with Robin Hood is a similar one I had with Illumination Sing. What reason is there for these characters to be animals in the first place? I call bullcrap! Animals walking around like humans? How unrealistic and historically inaccurate is that? Imagine characters having human- wait. <laughs> I just- <clears throat> I just contradicted- I just contradicted myself again. <laughs> well, no real reason except aesthetics, I suppose. A bunch of animals certainly look more colorful than animated humans. I mean, why is Mickey a mouse or Donald a duck? Besides of some selected jokes, it doesn't really matter to their character and they might as well be humans in most of their shorts. Not much different here. Also, the personality of the characters is also reflected by their appearance this way. Robin is a cunning fox, the bat is a rooster, the carefree little John is basically Baloo, his is a sinister snake, and Prince John is a cowardly lion, while his brother is the more majestic king of all animals. Huh, a lion king whose brother is trying to usurp him. Where did I hear that one before? Robin Hood is a legendary heroic outlaw, originally depicted in English folklore and subsequently featured in literature and film. 
Though everyone knows the best version is Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> According to legend, he was a highly skilled archer and swordsman. In some versions of the legend, he is depicted as being of noble birth and having fought in the Crusades before returning to England to find his lands taken by the sheriff. In other versions, this is not the case and he is instead born into the yeoman class. Traditionally depicted dressed in Lincoln Green, he is said to have robbed from the rich and given to the poor. Through retangs, additions and variations, a body of familiar character associated with Robin Hood have been created. This includes his lover, Maid Marian, his band of outlaws, the Merry Men. I protest, I am not a Merry Man! On the contrary, Lieutenant Worf, your clothing identifies you with the character of Will Scarlet, just as Geordie's mandolin identifies him as Alan Adale. And you, Mr. Data, bear a striking resemblance to Friar Tuck. I will not play the fool for Q's amusement! And his chief opponent, the Sheriff of Nottingham. The Sheriff is often depicted as assisting Prince John in usurping the rightful but absent King Richard, to whom Robin Hood remains loyal. A common theme of the story is that Robin is a champion of the common people fighting against injustice while remaining loyal to the rightful ruler. He became a popular folk figure in the late Middle Ages and the earliest known ballads featuring him are from the 15th century. There have been numerous variations and adaptations of the story over the last 600 years and the story continues to be widely represented in literature, film and television. Robin Hood is considered one of the best known tales of English folklore, so though it's technically not a true story, there may be some truth to it buried in there somewhere. The historicity of Robin Hood is not conclusively proven and has been debated for centuries. There are numerous references to historical figures with similar names that have been proposed as possible evidence of his existence, some dating back to the late 13th century. At least eight plausible origins to the story have been mooted by historians and folklorists, including suggesting that Robin Hood was a stock alias used by outlaws in general who did not want to reveal their identity. Everyone loves an outlaw. The Scarlet Pimpernel, Zorro, Batman, all of these vigilantes are admirable because they are outside the law for the sake of those trapped in it. The trope has remained a popular one for hundreds of years and shows no sign of fading. Especially with the huge superhero boom, you can bet more than one comic took inspiration from the legend of Robin Hood over the years. Batman is best hero though. <coughs> Frankly, I always was more a Spidey kind of guy, but I think we are getting a little bit off track. But, but, Batman though. Fine. For me, Disney's Robin Hood reeks of nostalgia. That theme song, if you can call it that, always makes me smile. It could be said Robin Hood is one of Disney's simplest movies as it doesn't really take many risks with the story and the animation isn't all that groundbreaking. It perhaps plays it a little too safe and it may be considered to be one of Disney's laziest movies, having a lot of recycled animation in it. The lack of exploration and character from Maid Marian especially confused me as a kid. Watching it as an adult, I can appreciate the creativity and ingenuity that went into animating the anthropomorphic animals. Well, it is one of my favourite Disney movies, but I can admit that this movie has more than just a few flaws. Most characters are in the end rather one-dimensional and mostly defined by the animal stereotypes they are presenting. Well, and Little John and his are fully recycled Jungle Book characters to boot. And even with that in mind, Robin's roguish attributes are rather downplayed throughout the movie. It is rather pronounced in the beginning when he and Little John discuss if they are actually good guys, but that's brushed aside later on and he becomes your ordinary, all-loving hero even if he still shows some wit, but it's still fun to watch. The jokes are for the most part good and I think this movie actually has some very intense scenes. There is so much going on in the giant brawl after the tourney and the climax at the burning castle. You can feel the tension when Robin is sneaking into John's bedroom and I think this deserves some credit. Something that annoyed me though was that so many characters had American accents. Eh, it was the 70s, I suppose back then it was a bit difficult to get a complete British VA cast for a movie produced in America, and we probably don't want them all trying to sound British either. Not that this has ever been a problem for me, growing up with the German dub at all. Ah, oh, of course. Fair enough. What about that infamous deleted scene though, where Prince John tries to stab Robin Hood? 
I'm almost a bit disappointed that we didn't get to see that one, as it highlights pretty well that John, under his rather goofy personality, is actually a pretty threatening villain. You see it a couple of times throughout the movie, at times he is downright cunning, but he's mostly remembered as a silly mama's boy. And not only John gets a bit of additional death, Marion is willing to risk her life to defend Robin in that scene, making her appear a bit stronger than in the cut we got as well. It felt like this would have been a much better way for King Richard to appear as well, rather than just briefly at the end just to tell a joke. Well, on the flip side, you could make an argument that an entrance like this would be a borderline deus ex machina, but can we talk for a minute about the fact that John mentioned in the beginning that his hypnotized Richard to send him on the crusade? Do you know how many people died because of this? He says quite a body count. Well, <laughs> that's Disney for you. So even though the characters are pretty much one-dimensional and the story is pretty straightforward, what holds this movie up is its style choice with having anthropomorphic animals instead of humans. True, the rotoscoping of old animation and the Xerox animation technique makes this film feel cheap compared to other Disney movies prior to this one, but it has a charm and wit to it that makes the film, like its main character, very charismatic and appealing. They cut a few corners here and there, but I think the end result is just a charming, fun movie. Besides that, one reason I simply love this movie as a child is admittedly the setting itself. This movie introduced me to the myth of Robin Hood and it stuck with me ever since. And as a little boy, I of course loved all the medieval stuff and swordplay you get to see here. Part of me wishes that it was more like a cartoon series cause the way this movie is structured, I think it would work better and it would give a bit more time to flesh out the characters. Hey, that's something they could put on Disney+. Plus. Hey, I'd watch the heck out of that! Well, I guess that just about wraps things up with the review. Thanks for joining me on it, and thanks for the help with the whole anthro thing. Still can't get my head around that stuff. Mary, you're just a diet furry. Shut up, Mary. Well, that was fun, but I better go. See you around and stay foxy. It's, uh, stay creative, actually. Am I not allowed to have an obligatory signing off phrase? Sure, but don't steal mine. Hey, now we know what the fuck says. <sighs>